Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. Biggest fish of the tournament, what's your guess? About two and a half. That's right. Two and a half pounds? Drop your fish right in here, buddy. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Hey, catch a big one. I will. All right. And a little bit of fresh pepper. Just a little bit of pepper, though, because uh, crappie's a really nice, delicate fish, and you don't want to overpower it. Our stated mission is to educate people about the environmental necessity, the economic value, and the natural beauty of native plants. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. You're doing perfect. That's the way you do it, just slow and easy. It's right where, under where my lure is, right here, look. Okay, be hold it high and then ease down in there. There he goes, you got him. Good job. Oh boy, you got a little baby that time. Small fry. <laughs> this is Tommy Tidwell. Good job, good job. That's a female. See, these are females out in here. He's a part-time fishing guy. You couldn't have caught the only one in there. Oh, did I? I hope nobody catches me working. He's Wally Marshall. I'm supposed to be fishing, right? Wally used to be a fishing guy. Built Ford Tough, Bass Pro Shops. Got to get these sponsors banners out, John. Yes, something right there. This is the story of two guys with one thing in common. Well, it's a black crappie. They both mm. love crappie. Man, that's a hog right there. Yeah. This is the best right class ever. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, good deal. <laughs> when he's not out on the boat, Tommy is here in the classroom teaching ninth grade biology. Okay, everybody, time to listen up. Today, his class is studying the internal organs of animals by dissecting freshly caught crappie. Cut, cut some more of this. Go this way and cut some more of that out where you can see some more in there. Oh, man. Oh, oh just square. square. I, said, I didn't mean to hit you right there. That's the key thing, you know, to let them get hands on and see what everything looks like. Look, there's his heart right there. Look how tiny that heart is compared to his body. In the past, Tommy has bought preserved fish. But it turns out they're nowhere near as good for dissecting as the fresh ones he catches. Uh. Big female there, see? That's the kind we're looking for right there. Ooh. See where it's hollow in there? Look, yeah. they really like doing this. I mean, kids that sometimes don't do much the rest of the year, when we get into dissecting, they get real excited about it. Hey, hey, look here, guys. Here's a parasite. Who's got some tweezers? Here you go. Is he moving? Yeah, he's moving. Look, guys, this parasite is still moving. Ew. Get him, Garrett. Come on, you got your good one. There you go. Good job. <laughs> First five seconds. Today, Tommy is still teaching, only this time it's in an outdoor classroom. He's already turning back white. After they spawn, they'll all turn the same color. They're on a lake. No textbooks, no quizzes or exams. There you go. You got your one. Just an enthusiastic neighborhood kid <laughs> named Garrett. You scared me half to death. <laughs> Can you get him off? Yeah. Uh, that was easy. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there you go. Two at a time. Look at there. There's one. There you go, Garrett. <laughs> Get him, Garrett. Oh, crap. Oh, you missed him. Oh, there's a good one. It's a catfish. Get in here and check something there. See those sticks right there, Garrett? 
When I get up there, you drop it right down in those sticks. There you go, perfect. Now be ready, he'll get it. Crappie is a good fish to start kids out on too because you can catch a lot of them and the fish, even small ones, they're fun to catch. Good job, good job. Cool, I could have lost him. Did you reel? No. Don't reel. They were building the lake at the time we were kids and you know, every weekend we were out here camped out. Our parents, they didn't worry where we were at. Get him. Naughty fishy. <laughs> they knew we were out here on the lake fishing and camping. There's a good tree right there, be ready. I can take a lot of husbands and take their wives out here and I tell them, put their wife next to me and I'll make sure she can catch more fish than you do. <laughs> A lot of the husbands, they're happy. When, when the wife's happy, the husband's happy. First of all, about that name. It may read like crappy, but you'd be wrong. It's actually pronounced crappie. Crappie comes from the word crepe, a French pancake that's flat, just like the fish. It's also the third most popular catch in Texas, just behind largemouth bass, and catfish. Oh yeah, we got a lot of crappie. And like many other sport fish, crappie doesn't just appear out of nowhere. Biologists like Greg Binion very carefully monitor the species. White crappie. What we're recording right now. 255. Is length. 47. And we're also getting a weight in grams. We can compare that year to year and get an idea if the population may have increased since the last survey or it's actually declined in abundance. Black crappie, 251. Are they good eating fish? Excellent. In my opinion, one of the best freshwater fish to eat. So thanks to folks like Greg, we have enough of these tasty fillets to go around. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> It's gonna be a beautiful morning, you know, it's rained all last night, yeah. so. I think I'm gonna leave a little opening. <laughs> Where's that coffee pot at? Where's your blade at? It's something you gotta do, man. Biggest fish of the tournament, what's your guess? About two and a half. That's right. Two and a half pounds? Drop your fish right in here, buddy. This is the Mr. Crappie Big Crappie Classic. All right, young man, what's your name? It's a once a year, everybody wins, family-friendly fishing tournament. I don't have a boat, I don't know where to go. Okay, you're gonna fish from the bank, you wanna fish from the shore. Yes, sir. There's a walkway that goes out. And this is Mr. Crappie himself. And so just cast out past it and just do a slow retrieve, okay? He's also known as Wally Marshall. Just work that bank line right there and you'll catch some fish. All right, thank you, Mr. Marshall. Hey, thank you, buddy. Hey, catch a big one. I will. All right. Wally adopted the Mr. Crappie moniker back in 1996 and went on to make a name for himself with a complete line of Mr. Crappie products. Why do I do this? It's because I like to see families spending time on the water Catching fish, having a great time. We just getting cranked up. There comes a family right there. Fish. Families like the Russells. <laughs> There's Robert, his brother, Kenneth. OK, Dad, ready? And their three kids. Let me see you a minute. They've fished this tournament since they were tadpoles. That is one big fish. <laughs> She's Alexis. <laughs> He's Weldon. And this oh, Guapi! is Cody. Aw. It got it away. Ugh. I said, you ready to go fishing? And they're like, let's go. I almost caught that big one. Anytime they can go fishing, they're happy. Bring them up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh. there you go. Good girl. It's heavy. <laughs> She's a fishing fool. Whoa, big fish, big fish. Oh, you got off again. Oh, me. Mom said it was too early to get up, so she didn't come out. <laughs> There's a fish. Really? Really? Oh, all right. Oh, stop. <laughs> Good grief. Hold this one. This is the greatest fishing partner in the world. Same thing my dad did with me and the same thing he did with my brother. He uh, took us fishing. That was the best time when we went out with him. Where are them out? <laughs> we got a lot of fish. Did you get one, Cody? Fish! Okay, fish. I got one. Finally, Cody gets a fish. There you go. Yeah. 
and all is right with the world. Aw, good job, Cody. I want to commend you today for bringing the children out to the tournament. Cody Russell, put him in there, buddy. Woo, he's a live one. It doesn't really matter if you're a showman like Wally Marshall. 1.05, way to go, young man. Or if you're more of a teacher and mentor. Come on, Garrett. Like Tommy Tidwell. He's black, too. See, that's a little male. Looks like it's about 10 inches. All right, brother. When you have a love and a passion for something, you just really want to share it. It's just a thrill to see families out on the lake. There you go. The fish is a bonus, actually. But spending time in the outdoors is really what it's all about. You came untied. I'm sorry, buddy. It's OK. I did it happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, uh, this is Tim Spice with Texas Parks and Wildlife. We're here at McKinney Falls State Park and we've got some fresh crappie here from uh, Granger Lake, a few miles up the road. We're going to show you how to uh, take your catch from the day and fry it up nice and easy and have a great meal for you and your family. To prepare the fish, first I, I've taken it out of its container and we've dried it off a little bit. We're gonna lightly prep it with some, uh, a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh pepper. All right, just a little bit of pepper though because uh, crappie's a really nice delicate fish and you don't wanna overpower it. I was raised with just a simple cornmeal batter. You can do a little thicker if you like with an egg wash or even a little bit of uh, milk or uh, buttermilk. But this is pretty simple. You'll get a great fish flavor just this way. All right, we've got the temperature right where we like it, about between 250 and 275. Now we're just gonna take our battered fish and put them right in the oil. Watch your fingers so you don't splatter that hot grease. We wanna cook the crappie for about two minutes on each side. Nice light brown and keep it nice, moist, and tender on the inside. That's the best way to eat it. All right, these look good, these are done. We're gonna put them all on the plate here for everybody. If you wanna know how your fish are done, here's a simple test. Take a fork and if you can break apart the flakes, that means your fish is done. Here's a raw fish and you can see I can't pull the flakes apart. When the flakes break apart, your fish is done. Now we're gonna cook this lighter method where we've got the fillets, we won't bread them. We're going to take a little fresh tarragon, we're gonna rub it into the fish, and then we're gonna take a little lemon, and we're just gonna squeeze it onto the fish here. Now we're ready to put it on the pan. First off, we're gonna have a little bit of olive oil to help keep it from sticking in, it adds some great flavor. And then we're gonna take those fillets that we uh, put the tarragon on and put them straight on the pan. Great little sizzle, that means that pan's hot. It will, again, just like the other fish, it'll only take a couple of minutes on each side. I picked a shallow pan so that I can get my spatula in there a little easier. Now those fillets are very delicate, so you have to be careful when you turn them or they'll fall apart on you. That tarragon and that lemon, I can smell it right now, really great flavor coming through on that fish. It doesn't take but less than a minute if, the, if your pan's hot. Fishing is a great family activity and preparing a great meal for your whole family in one of our great state parks is something that we'd love for you to do. We've got two kinds of fish here, prepped a little coleslaw and some hush puppies and you know what? I think it's about time to sit down and dig in. You guys ready to eat? Yeah. Texas is a big state and we need your help protecting it. If you see someone messing with Texas wildlife, contact our toll-free Operation Game Thief Hotline. It's Crime Stoppers for Critters, manned around the clock, and you could receive up to a $1,000 reward. Thousands of Texans have helped Operation Game Thief put a stop to wildlife abuse. You can make a difference.
just about everybody enjoys wildflowers. They're so simple and yet so beautiful. In a world full of noise and confusion, they offer peace, serenity, and solace. One of the best places to learn about wildflowers and other native plants is the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center in Austin. The Wildflower Center is really about native plants. Our stated mission is to educate people about the environmental necessity, the economic value, and the natural beauty of native plants. Water conservation is a major issue that faces all of us. The Wildflower Center conducts numerous programs where people can learn management techniques and how to use native plants to save water. The results of these practices are evident all over the grounds. Walking the numerous trails is a great way to see the benefits of this kind of conservation. It's also a great place to simply enjoy the outdoors. Another popular site shows how you can utilize native plants around your home. This area is called the theme gardens. This is where we show different types of uh, demonstrations of how to arrange plants in, in somewhat of a formal setting. There are themes for almost every interest. Want to keep deer out of your garden? There are plants for that. Attracting songbirds is easy when you select the proper native plants. If you want to show the red, white, and blue, why not grow it and save water at the same time? Plants in the theme garden are labeled to educate visitors about the possibilities of using native plants. That gives them several choices. They have the opportunity to come out here and see all the different varieties of plants that we have and to use those to their liking. Native plants don't require us using pesticides and fertilizers that could damage the environment. And economically speaking, uh, it saves water, time, maintenance. The other thing is it's educational. Uh, it provides education to uh, children as well as adults on using these types of uh, plant materials as uh, landscape in the home and in commercial areas. The Wildflower Center is not only a source of inspiration, it's also a source of plants. We have two gardening festivals each year. We have one in the spring and one in the fall. And we have lots of education-related activities aimed at the local Central Texas audience, especially people that maybe just moved here from another place and don't know about our native plants, people that just bought a house and are looking for ideas. We have many extremely knowledgeable volunteers. We have people throughout the horticulture industry that come and help us that day of the festival. You know, kill it lightly, put the seeds down, pack it in a bit, yeah. and water it as you can. Let good Lord take over. Thank you. So the idea is that people can come and get the information they need and the resources they need to go home and actually plant a native landscape. The plants are propagated and grown here on the grounds. It gets quite busy those times of years because we're preparing and providing quite a production uh, of plants. We have approximately about 170 different species that are available you're uh, sure to get a nice variety of native plants. About a third of our native plants are threatened or endangered. Planting native species is a way to invest in the future of our natural heritage. It's a way to demonstrate our love for the natural world and teach our children a valuable lesson. 
We are interested in transforming the way people think about plants so that they can gain a better knowledge and understanding of their ecological heritage, especially here in Central Texas. We run a large number of educational programs, everything from public outreach to school group visits. We have conferences and seminars on special topics such as oak wilt and then uh, juniper control. You can light this and you send a head fire, it runs into that. There's a couple of different approaches you can take. One of the approaches recommended by our landscape restoration program is to implement controlled burns to encourage the growth of grasses and wildflowers. This is a little wind meter. Works pretty well out in the field. You know, you think it's just a little toy, but it, it actually works pretty well. On the left side, it has a low scale that goes from about two miles per hour up to 10. And if you've got uh, winds like we do today, that side of the scale is okay. And be sure and watch it if it tries to come across. Now just imagine if you had to walk two miles standing bent over like that. Hold up, hold up. Anytime you see anything that's different from what it was doing, like uh -huh. it's going that way, stop. You know, and let it do what it's gonna do. And more than likely, it's gonna come back this way here in a second. If you wanna just back him up after he wets it, and just kinda stir it up a little. All right. When done correctly, Prescribed burns can be focused precisely where you need them to help bring back a diversity of plants. The Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center has so many dimensions. It's a place to learn, a place to look, a place to connect. The Wildflower Center is a place about place. It's a place that demonstrates the biological richness and the uh, botanical diversity of the Texas Hill Country. Everything you see here is native to this part of the world. And the idea is, is that every place is rich and beautiful, including this place. And so we want you to come here and see what we've done just using the native plants of the Texas Hill Country. And then of course our real encouragement is just to get out in nature and look around you and look at it deeply and, and look at the patterns in nature and how they work. And, and uh, we encourage people to try to bring those patterns in, into their own lives and in their own communities.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.